real success stories told by the people who live them. We're going to have some guests on this show that everybody knows, and we're going to have guests on this show that nobody knows yet. One by one, Nick Heider is adding hits to the hit streak. Blessings, folks. Welcome back to another episode of The Hit Streak. I am your man, Nick Heider. And folks, I've got an extra special treat joining me in the Hit Lab today. She's coming all the way from Sarasota, Florida. She is the founder of CSJ, a leading authentic fashion styling company for high-performing female entrepreneurs. Folks, help me welcome Jessica Papano. Jessica, what is happening? Thanks for being here today. Thank you so much for having me, Nick. Uh, I was so excited to come today, got off the airplane, went to the hotel, put our stuff at the concierge, and did my hair and changed my outfit in the hotel bathroom. Getting it done. Yes. <laughs> Getting it done. Yes. Well, um, again, thanks so much for being here, folks. Um, check her out online at the csjstyling.com and on Instagram at the Jessica Papineau, right? That's so, um, well, we got to get right into it because yeah. we don't have a whole lot of time for small talk because you got too much going on. You know yes. what I mean? It's so much. It, we got this thing's going to be jam packed. So, first of all, buckle up and get ready for a killer episode, right? So um, CSJ, a leading authentic fashion styling company for high performing female entrepreneurs. All right. So um, I got to know, like, I know you guys are big on innovation. I know framework is a big piece of your operation. But uh, so I mentioned high performing female entrepreneurs. Well, let's describe yes. exactly who that is. And then let's get into your framework. So she is the woman that no matter what it is she's doing, um, whether it be at work and trying to be the best version of herself and just, you know, take it to that next level, reinvent herself over and over again, or at home being the best version of who she is. Mm. As, you know, maybe she has a couple of children. She wants to be the best for them. When she's with them, she wants to be fully present, whether that's going to their games or doing homework with them. When she's with her husband, she, again, she wants to be fully present. She wants to have the ability to go for dinner and be there and hold the space with him mm -hmm. and have fun and have joy in her life. And she knows that in order to have somewhat of balance, because I don't fully believe in balance, uh, she needs to outsource talent to help mm. her achieve that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, I am married mm -hmm. to an amazing and powerful woman. And uh, but now I'm a dad to a young lady. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, and raising a young lady is totally different than raising the boy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So what advice before we get into your framework and this might lead into the framework. So what advice would you have for all the dads out there raising these next generation of amazing women? I think the biggest thing with raising, it doesn't matter if it's a girl or a boy, it's allowing him or her to be her true authentic self in a way that it's celebrated. Mm. So I think sometimes as parents, right, we have these ideas about what we think our children should do or, um, you know, we're kind of living through our kids. It's, I think it's really about allowing them, seeing what they love and leaning into that with them. Mm. I, think, I don't think I could, get, could have said it any better myself. <laughs> um, all right. Well, let's talk, about, um, let's talk about the framework. I know you guys have um, some new tech in the form of an app. Um, too. Right. Uh, so too. Let's, let's talk about all, you, all that you guys got going on in the framework about what it's like when, the, when somebody, when a woman works with you. Well, the reason uh, I'll just go into this first, the reason why we've taken uh, this next step, this next level that we're doing is we've seen since since the birth of CSJ, which will be five years, February 14th, actually. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, we have seen so many transformations. We have seen so many women have the ability once they work uh, with us to close the gap very quickly between where they are and where they desire to mm. be. And so I'm one person. <laughs> I need 
to have the ability to serve more women and how best to do that than to create a community. We're creating an app where we will have a digital course, um, you know, more of a DIY, how to edit your wardrobe and how to set it up for success, but also really a safe space for these high performing women or, you know, it doesn't have to just be a woman in business. It could be a woman that stay at home mom or maybe she's retired, mm -hmm. but a place where she can go and be with other women that are also looking to level up their style mm. and have the desire to transform their lives. And so we will now have a platform in which we can do live Q and A's, we can do demonstrations, we can bring in other really cool women uh, in different areas of not only business, but self-development, um, fitness, uh, health, yeah. all these different areas where we take a totally different approach than what you may see out there as far as stylists um, and influencers when it comes to style. Our whole thing really is about helping women step into their power mm. and be the woman they were designed to be. Absolutely. Um, you know, as, as a, um, we, we don't shy away from the fact that faith is what leads us here. Yeah. And, um, you know, I'm a firm believer that, um, and it's proven there's only one of you, right? So you're a hundred percent unique. And I believe that God gives each person a gift that makes them uh, there brings it that is their uniqueness and i think mm -hmm. that most people that aren't happy doing what they're doing are not using the gift that god gave them i think they're doing something else absolutely so talking about frameworks the first part of our framework is before we even step into the woman's closet or even okay. talk about clothes it's about reviewing and reflecting on their life you know, many women don't even take that pause or that opportunity to really truly think about what they desire. And, you know, I don't have daughters. I always thought I'd have girls. I have two boys. But our kids are always watching us. So, you know, as as a woman, when I see a woman that has a daughter, uh, I think it's really important that our daughters see us take that pause and really live into our purpose so that they have something that they can aspire to do and know that what they desire matters mm. and that they're worthy of that. Absolutely. And so we really, I hold the space with these women uh, when we first begin working together to allow that that time for them to think about what they really want. Mm. And sometimes it takes a minute and when I ask the question, they'll say something really quick. <laughs> they'll say, I'm, you know, I want to get the promotion at work. You know, that's usually what it is. And I'll say, well, tell me more about that. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? What do you like about your job? Mm. And then there's a, an awkward silence for a few minutes. Mm. Um, and then I, I see them kind of look to the side and you could see them thinking. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like, that's my in for, I say, tell me a little bit about what makes you uniquely you. Mm. So that framework really, that's the first thing. It was interesting that you said that, Nick, about uniqueness. I want to discover their uniqueness. Yeah, absolutely. And really determine, you know, what their goals are, where they want to be. And then before even going into the wardrobe to, for them to have that mindset of this is what I desire. Love it. I love it. So, all right, now check it out. I got to say something real quick. I, I, obviously, a lot of our audience is guys, all right? So, yeah. guys, check it out. If they're like, I've been learning a ton today already because we've been hanging out before we started shooting this. But one of the hardest things that I have to do every year is um, get my wife a birthday or Christmas or anniversary present because... Mm -hmm. My wife is very much in tune with what you're saying. She knows exactly what she likes. And uh, you remember in the the show Friends how that was a thing you could never bought Rachel a, a gift because she was always going to return it. Well, like that, I learned that. <laughs> That's me, <laughs> right? So at some one day, I was just like, "Can I just save you some time and hassle to not have to return something?" Like, 
so like literally this Christmas, there was she has her favorite stores and she had already gone in and and the stuff. So basically there was all this stuff behind the counter that my son went in and and I was like, hey, I'm here. I'm Rhiannon's husband. They're like, oh, yeah. And they pulled out all the stuff and it was and it was like, you know, you could pick the ones that you wanted to get based on what was approved. Right. Yeah. We got all of them. OK, that was that was a Smart surprise. <laughs> However, um, by actually taking the time to understand if if your woman if a woman understands what you're talking about then all the husband has to do is get to know the your woman and so fellas i'm, I'm saving you some time here right you know what i mean like come on so um to that was my uh, my little disclaimer because we do our audience is a lot of guys you know what i yeah. mean so um the uh, there's a lot of value that you guys are going to get out of here about your spouses daughters um, and, uh, and, and other people in your networks on top of the fact that framework's good, whether you're man or a woman, right? Yes. All right. Awesome. Can I say something about, Absolutely. about the husbands? Please. Okay. So we have some really cool, cool experiences with the husbands because they don't totally understand always what, what we're doing. So when that we, may be the most factual <laughs> statement there's ever been said on the history right there. But here's the feedback that we get from men after we work with their wives or girlfriends. Number one, they start to see their wife become more confident mm -hmm. and they love that because men, you know, they, they see their, their wife in jeans and a t-shirt and no makeup and they're like, they think she's gorgeous, but she may not feel beautiful, yep. right? Because as a woman, it really is all about, you know, our perception, of how we look in the mirror and do we feel beautiful? Mm -hmm. But when she starts to feel more confident and he gets to see that, it's almost like she becomes a little sexier to him. No doubt. But also um, their relationship starts to get a little better. They start to have more fun in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. Am I allowed to say that on this oh, show? Oh, yeah. It's, I mean, it's important. <laughs> it's, it's important. I mean, that, that, dude, yeah. um, my wife and I, our story is um, like we were actually um, separated at one point in time before we got married. We did everything backwards. Um, we had a son. Um, I actually met her in 2003 and my game was so good that 2009 is when I got, or 2007 is when I got my first date. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, and then our son was born in 2009 and we got married in 2014 because Nick was too poor to, to pay for a wedding. We were in a mm. deep, dark hole. Um, and she was, what I found out later is that she was actually raising a man at the time. I didn't know that when we were going through it. So, yeah. um, I had a lot of growing up to do. And um, thankful for me, she was able to stick through that. But um, she used to tell me the same things, you know, that the better she felt, the more rewarding it was always going to be for me. And she was yeah. basically teaching me about confidence. Yeah. And what I found out is that your confidence is basically your a belief in yourself. You know what yeah. I mean? It's it's a feeling. But um, uh, and I love what Coach Prime and Deion Sanders doing at Colorado. He says, "Don't let my confidence offend you." You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, and he also said, and this goes right along with your brand, he said, you know, if you look good, you feel good. And if you feel good, you play good. And if you pay good, they pay good. <laughs> right? Yeah. So um, awesome. taking taking the time. I don't, when did it become not cool for guys to take pride in their appearance? Because they can make fun of me all the time about it. Uh, they're probably jealous. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, all right. So that's enough about fellas. So but let, get, can I say one work. more thing Absolutely. about the guys? Okay. So the other thing they say is when it's date night, mm -hmm. they're not waiting for her to get ready. Mm. She's ready just like that because we've created the outfits for her and the picture is right on her phone and she knows it's going to look great and she puts it on and they run out the door. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. All right. So... Um, um, let's talk more about the um, the, the confidence and self worth thing is is huge because, um, like where people are at their success, um, all the choices that they make, everybody wherever they're at in their life today, it's literally like all the choices they've ever made led them to this moment right now. Yes, right. So if that's the case, and, and mindset is a thing that a word that wasn't used very often until like you know maybe like the last four or five years, and now it's talked about mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, your confidence and your self-worth are basically one in the same, right? Talk to me a little they bit are. about that. Um, I'll talk about it in relation to uh, to working with a woman with the clothes. Mm -hmm. So I'll just kind of paint the picture here. When 
I hold that space with them. So women are literally and figuratively stripping down in front of me. Okay. And they're putting on clothing and I always have them put on fitted clothing when we first begin because you know I call it the cake and the icing on the cake. So we're putting on the cake mm. and it's all about the fit and the fabric and I want to show every woman no matter what size she is that she can wear fitted clothing and it's gonna look good if we put it on in such a way. Right. So she puts on the the fitted pair of denim and a really tight t-shirt and we tuck it in and we're doing the whole thing and she looks in the mirror before I've put the icing on the cake and her eye goes right to those areas of her body that she's shameful of and that she doesn't like. Mm. And talk about mindset. What happens when you focus on areas that you don't like or that That's you're right. shameful of? You just get more of it, right? Right. And so she is not seeing the full picture. She's not seeing herself. She's only seeing what she doesn't like. Mm. So my role, right, and my gift to give the world and to give women is to show her not how to hide those areas okay. because we see this all the time and no matter if she's a size zero or she's a size 24 mm -hmm. uh she has there every woman has an area of their body or areas they don't like and so when they don't like something they cover it up they maybe they don't like their stomach and they're putting on this long top on but it's the interesting thing is when I can show women how to highlight the best areas of themselves and wear really great fabrics mm -hmm. and highlight the smallest part of their waist. And maybe the area, the stomach area they don't like is showing, but they're not seeing it anymore. Mm. They're seeing what is beautiful. And when they can truly see themselves, this is the mind shift. They can look at themselves in the mirror see the whole person and all of their beauty and they can look in their own eyes and they can truly see who they are and who they're designed to be. I want to thank all of our loyal fans that spread across all 50 states and 14 different countries. It's absolutely amazing. Folks, help us keep spreading the word, right? Share your favorite episodes with friends and make sure that you are liking and subscribing to The Hit Streak on all digital platforms. Thanks again, and we look forward to more. It's amazing how we focus on, I mean, and it's almost like you're, so the news is on, um, network TV, right? And it's literally called paid programming, right? That second word is the powerful one, programming. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like, and they show, the, you know, of all the news, there's a lot of good news out there, but it's going to be 80, 70, 80, 90% are all bad news, right? And what you focus on grows. That was basically what you just said. Yes. You know what I mean? So it's, I've figured out that you can't be, you can't have a bad day if you're grateful. My pastor says, mm -hmm ungratefulness is the root of all sin all right so if if you can't be in a bad mood when you're grateful there's you said you know there's problem areas but that means there's also areas that aren't problems and basically you're just having them shift their focus yes. onto the non-problematic areas and they can yes. be grateful for those yes right so it's a whole it's totally just a shift in perspective it is and then once she can really see herself mm. and we can really talk about what she desires um, my superpower is my imagination. So I can literally close my eyes and as she tells me where she wants to be, mm. I can imagine her being there and I can see what she looks like. Mm. Do you think, so that when you ask them that question, that maybe, mm. it's probably, I'm gonna guess, we haven't talked about this, that's probably the first time they actually thought about who they're supposed to be or what that polished version looks like. I have had women, I had this one woman and she actually was um, in Sarasota and she came to my studio. We went through this process and I watched her look in the mirror and I always know when the shift happens, mm. I see it in their eyes and her, she was 75 years old and her eyes welled up with tears. And she said, this is the very first time that I feel pretty. Wow. Wow. 75 years. Yes. So some women never 
never truly go there because they've never given themselves permission. Mm. And this is why I feel so called to do what I'm doing because I get to see and watch these transformations happen. Mm. That's a beautiful thing. That is a beautiful thing. And you can tell just by seeing your face light up when you talk about these people you've worked with, how important this is to you. Yeah. Um, and um, now this is this is pretty a couple questions to um, kind of talk about the future of things. But I also want to highlight the fact yeah. that, you know, you have two teenage boys. Yes, I do. And, you know, and you were um, out of the workforce for a few years. Right. Yes. To raise to 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 raise the family. Yes. And uh, which is the most important job on planet Earth. OK. <laughs> but um, outside of that, like how many you probably work with a lot of a lot of women that struggle to get back in because as time goes on, maybe they feel like their value at their worth. Yes. Isn't you know, they got left behind. Right. So um, let's stay there first. So like, you know, you, like at Brand Builders, who, where we're both at Brand Builders, yeah. um, we say it all the time. You're most uh, thanks, Rory. You're most uniquely positioned to serve the person that you used to be, which yes. is literally what you're doing. You're living out that mission, right? I am. I okay. Am. So speak to that a little bit. So when I was 34, um, it was 2011, uh, my husband lost his job. Um, they were doing some you know, major changes in the company, eliminated his position. And we at that point had already spent all of our savings to move to Sarasota, Florida from Canada. And so we were living on food stamps. Our kids were on Medicaid and we were just getting by. Mm. And it was, I knew that I had to step up to the plate right. <laughs> and, and be, um, you know, and, and help out the family and start to provide. My husband obviously was looking for a job. I knew I could get a job very easily in retail. I had had lots of experience. I was great at it. Um, of course, I was scared. Uh, and I went out and I got a job in a high-end women's clothing store. And because I had been out of the workforce for a period of time, I was only offered $10 an hour for that position. Right. Uh, well, my husband, you know, started getting back into the workforce. We were, I was making $10 an hour. The babysitter was making $12 an hour oh to watch goodness. our children. And so I'm saying this to say that I knew, I, I knew that I had a gift and I knew somewhere, even though I, I felt like I had lost myself and having children and, and I did have that lack of worthiness, I knew that I had that gift and that I had to share it and that I also needed to be there for my family, right? Mm. And I wanted my kids to see that they, in their lives, if they ever, you know, were down on their luck or something happened, that they could, um, go out there and change their situation. Mm -hmm. Man, you're you're living like living proof. One of the things that we focus on at the agency here at the Hit Lab is um, two things really that we really focus are focusing on right now. And one is like if you really don't truly know somebody like under the like you got to get under the surface. How much can you truly help them? And that's the purpose yeah. of the business is to help people. And um and and the other thing is that uh, that we focus on like a lot right now besides how do we help them is um what's the best way to put this um it's it's it, i know what it is it's it's not what people don't remember what we tell them they remember how we make them feel yes right so the women probably don't remember everything you told them <laughs> but that woman that cried yeah. that said she'd never felt pretty before like she'll never forget that she'll remember that'll be a uh, a core memory yes. that will always be in her in her memory box yes that's incredible, right? That's incredible. So, um, do you, I love stories here? All right, <laughs> and I'm just curious. The 75 year old is a pretty, pretty, pretty tough story to top. However, do you have any other stories about the, the like aha moments for those beautiful people yeah. when they truly discover themselves at the ripe old age of 75 or however old it is? Um, I just, you know, you talk about uh, Rory Vaden and being power, powerfully positioned to serve the, the person that you once were, right? Mm -hmm. And I always wished, because I reimagined and rediscovered myself at age 40, I always wished that I would have had someone that could have shown me that I could have been who I truly was when I was younger. Um, and so I'm saying that to say, 
um, we worked with this woman that had just had a baby. Um, and she reached out to me. She was, the, it was during the pandemic that she had been hired, um, in this mid level, mid level position, uh, in an IT company. And she was only working virtually. She had had the child during this time and the baby was six months old and she got a call from her boss and they said, okay, we're going to have our first in person time together, this conference that they were going to. And she freaked out because she thought, oh my gosh, I have nothing to wear. And I feel like so shameful of my body because Mm -hmm. I didn't get my body back yet. And she was in a mid-level position. She was um, uh, managing some people and she wanted to make her best impression, right? Right. And so she she found us on Google. She reaches out to me. We go to her home with two racks of clothes. She didn't have one pair of jeans that fit her. She was wearing her sweatpants when we got there. And she did have on a cute top, but that was simply because she was doing Zooms, right? And so her confidence level was very low at that time. And she was really scared that she was going to be revealed in front of all these people. So we found her all these amazing outfits, planned her outfits from day to night while she was going to be on the conference. And we left there and we saw her go from like thinking she was never going to fit in a pair of jeans again Mm. to she couldn't believe how amazing she looked. And she reached out to us when she got back and she said, Jessica, I knew that I felt great when I was there. Like I loved what I had on. She said, I had no idea the reception I would get from these higher ups in the company. She said, I walked in the room uh, for the first evening. It was the meet and greet. And she said, the vice president came up to me and she said, what is your, what is your name? And she told her, and she goes, oh, I've heard of you, but I didn't, I couldn't have imagined like you walked in here. You look like you own the company. Mm-hmm. And she said the whole uh, few days as it went on, um, she was getting so much attention from the higher up people in the company, which she didn't expect. The day she was leaving, the vice president took her aside and she said, when you get back, we need to put a date on the calendar for you and I to meet by Zoom. We are going to make some adjustments to your position. You are so in alignment with our brand And we want you not just in front of your people that you're managing. We want you in front of the client so that Mm -hmm. you can truly represent us. People don't always understand how big of an impression, um, how they like how they package or present themselves is physically. Right. So the when I was younger and um, I would wrap Christmas presents for the family. I was not good at it. And it got so bad that like I just kind of it became a thing. Like literally I would just go get a, a grocery store bag out of the thing. And I'd throw stuff in it and twirl it around and I'd write their name on it. I'm like, here you go. Because it's about the same quality as me wrapping the present. And um, it wasn't this like it it wasn't the same. The, like I can promise you nobody got excited to open my present based on nothing. It didn't matter what was in it based on what was on the outside. And I've interviewed thousands of people. And the ones that, uh, you know, you don't judge a book by the cover, but you kind of do. And when when um, a young man or young woman walks in and what they're wearing was thought out, it was planned, it was tailored, it fitted mm-hmm. there. There's uh, they're all they just they got a head start on everybody else in the journey that they're competing against right mm-hmm. then and there. And and their confidence usually reflects that as yes. well. The, my other beef with people that do that. So like we, you know, let's say I hired um, Ben over here and Ben came in with his best Sunday suit looking good. First day of work, he walks in and he's not wearing it and he's wearing something totally different way down. And I would look at him like, that's not the guy that I hired. Why? Right. Like, why did you wear the suit the other day? Well, I wanted to just show you my best. I mean, did you feel the best? Yeah. So, well, why don't you want to feel the best today? Right? right. So like people used to pick on me because like, I wouldn't leave the I wouldn't leave the house without doing everything mm-hmm. every day. And they would ask me why. And I was like, well, Tuesday's just as important as Saturday and so on and so forth. So I gave that it was like it was in sports. They said, if you treat every at bat like it's a one in practice, the moment will never be bigger than you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So um, like I totally believe in what you're saying. You know what I call it, Nick? What's I that? call it. This is what you need to do every day. You need to get up. You need to suit up and Mm. you need to show up. 
So, you know, there's there's all this talk, you know, in the self-development world, which I am I'm all about. I'm all in. Um, and it's really, you know, being very intentional when you get up in the morning and what you're doing, um, what you're putting in your brain, what you're putting in your mind when you first get up. Very important. Moving your body. Mm-hmm. Right. Very important. But also being intentional about how you get ready and set the tone for the day. Mm -hmm. So when you go in the shower, ladies, wash your hair. If it's day four, it's time. (laughs) Shave your legs (laughs) and put on an outfit. You deserve to put on an outfit every single day that makes you feel amazing. I don't care if it's a Saturday or it's a Monday. Mm Mm-hmm. Have the ability to see yourself in the mirror and and say to yourself before you leave for the day, I look like a million bucks. And go out there and conquer your day and show up. Show up for yourself and show up for everyone else that needs you to be the best version of you so that they can then share their gifts with the world so you can pour into them, right? The Hit Streak is powered by our partners at Hit Lab Creative Studios. Whether it's launching your brand new podcast, rebranding your current podcast, or taking advantage of any of their other content packages specifically for your social media needs, the Hit Lab is a one-stop shop for you. Visit hitlabstudio.com for more. Do you think that, um, you know, it to make the decision that, I want to have this transformation. I want to feel a certain way. Well, that takes um, that takes a uh, just making that decision is difficult. Yes. But do very. you think a lot of pe- a, lot, a lot of the women that you work with maybe they've made that decision, but they're so intimidated by you know what's trending versus what would look good for mm-hmm. them. I, I learned a lot. Like the first twenty years of, the, of suits that I wore did not fit, and I didn't know it. Like I was wearing like there were three sizes too big. They weren't tailored a certain way. I didn't know that there was Italian cut and you're and you know it and right. French and all that. I didn't know anything. So like, uh-huh. how would I be good at dressing if I didn't actually get to like learn what fashion was? Right? I didn't understand. Right. I didn't have any money until I understood money. Right? right. So I never got good at anything until I learned about it. Right. So you, I mean, obviously you'd shorten the journey big time, but yeah. you, but the women, the lack of confidence they have to make those decisions, that's that's really like, that's a big thing that you're helping them with, right? Yeah, and I wish so badly that women weren't so intimidated because we find actually, um, we've done a whole, uh, whole thing on this with our marketing, that it takes women one year from the time they start to follow us on social media, for example, until they make the decision to actually reach out for a freestyling call. And so I ask women when they reach out to me and we get on the call, when I ask the question too, like, when did you, why did you reach out? When did you start thinking about this? And they will, will tell me and they'll say, I, I'm so intimidated because you look in such a way like, I, I, I never thought would think I could look or be like you. Mm. And so there's this comparison that happens, right? And so this happens in fashion as well. So we're getting all these things coming at us on social media. We're looking on Pinterest, you know, all the girls are looking at at each other and what should I be wearing? What's my style? And then they try to wear some of these things that they see like on Instagram or whatever and they click the button, right? And they get the thing in the mail and it was cheap, right? And it Mm -hmm looked Mm -hmm. great on the model and they put it on and they look in the mirror and they think there's something wrong with their bodies because it doesn't look good. So (laughs) here's the thing. (laughs) Let me like debunk this a little bit for people. The models are deceiving sometimes. (laughs) They're clipping those clothes. There are so many things happening behind the scenes when they take those photos. I, I'm on photo shoots. I know, Tape. I know what happens. Um, so really when it comes to clothing, um, it's about even about quality over qu- quality over quantity. Okay. Okay. It's about fit. It's about fabric. And a lot of women don't know this. We're not educated on it. Mm-hmm. Right. And so a lot of clothing that is higher end, the quality of the fabric is better. Um, I'll give you the example of denim. I always use that example because I'm a jeans and t-shirt kind of girl. You know, jeans, 
designer jeans are different than what you're going to get in a, in a cheaper store. They just are. So I always tell women, instead of having that stack of like 20 pair of jeans and most of them don't fit and, you know, they, mm. they look what I would say good enough. Yeah. Um, you know, it's because the fabric isn't great. So when you have a really good pair of fitting denim and it's like a 2% lycra and it's higher in the rise and it's doing all the lifting and smoothing that you want it to do, you don't need to have 20 pair of them, mm. right? <laughs> I agree. I agree. Isn't So one of the things that... Um, Brad, uh, Bradley, when we talk, he, he'll challenge me sometimes from time to time uh, to always just like, dude, everything you're trying to do, like somebody's already done it before. Mm -hmm. Study the patterns of the greats. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, most of the, the people that your clients probably look up to have had a certain level of success and they take pride in everything that you're saying needs to be that they need to be proud of. Right. So if it's like, again, it's there's a, there's a certain way, like we, we talk about this with like just organization and cleanliness. You're not, you know, you can go to the most expensive neighborhood in town and the house is going to be impeccable when you get in there. There's not going to be like Cheetos bags laying all over the floor and trash and, and all those things. So like the nicest neighborhoods usually have the most, the most organized, clean home versus the other, the other side of town. So I always, I always challenge the guys if I see stuff laying around in here or whatever, maybe I'm like, go look at my desk <laughs> and right. every day it looks the same. Right. And, and, and I learned that from, from somebody else. So really what you're doing is just kind of giving them a, a glimpse into what it, like what success truly looks and feels like, you know yes. what I mean? Because it's, you're, again, you find it in, in the people that have already done those things. Yes. And I think it's all about investing in yourself. You know, women don't know where to start. Mm -hmm. um, typically, you know, they just keep buying the same thing over and over again and feeling like they have a closet full of clothes and nothing to wear. And they've wasted their money, right? Because most people are wearing less than 15% of what they even own. Mm. So when they get to me, when they reach out to me, they're at that point where I mean, it's, they're intimidated, right? Sure. But they're so frustrated and they're so, they want a, a transformation so bad. They want something better that they, they're ready, mm -hmm. right? They're ready to pay whatever they have to pay. And so what we do really is edit down, like a lot of what's in people's wardrobes is their past. It's the woman they used to be. Ooh. That's a big one right there. Yes, go ahead. And so, um, and I used to do these wardrobe edits where we'd go in and we'd dive in and go through each item. Is this good? Is this not good? And now with this digital course that's coming out that we're going to be doing, we'll be able to give that to women to to utilize and use. And there's a framework specifically for that. Mm. Um, but what we do when we go into people's wardrobes now, whether it's, um, you know, in person or virtually, is we're extracting what's great. We're finding the pieces that we can actually work with. We're looking at those core basic pieces that are going to take them to that next level, mm. that are going to take them to the life that they desire. And then we're building off of that. So being very intentional about and strategic about what we're bringing in. So bringing in those pieces to round out the outfit, mm. to ensure that we have that perfect pair of denim. We have the great white T-shirt. We have the perfect black suit. All these things that I call the cake. Right. And then topping it off with the icing and mixing and matching those pieces and creating a wardrobe that truly aligns with the woman that she's now becoming. Right. Man, that's solid. I love the get up, suit up, show up. I love that from being being a sports guy. That was when, you know, um, in playing on the high school baseball team, we didn't really have practice gear. Everybody wore their own stuff. It wasn't as good. And uh, and then when we got to college, all of a sudden they said, hey, you have practice gear. And we were all like, well, what is this for? You know, why do we need this to practice? And it was like, because like every, if we're a team, we need you guys to come together, act as one. It's a, called a uniform, which means everybody's the same, right? Everybody's wearing the same. So for, for me, getting up and suiting up is putting on the uniform because we got stuff to do. We yeah. got to go out there and make stuff happen, right? Um, what is, let's see, I want to keep unpacking this because like the the stuff that you're describing is, um, it, it goes like you're just, 
it goes so deep in everything. Like the the patterns of the of the problems that you solve, the solutions of are that for this uh, particular problem are the solutions for everything in their life. They're just learning yeah. how to think through things and 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 level themselves up, right? So, what is it that? Um, let's see, what is it that um, you think? So I, I guess what are the biggest objections you find when when uh, when people are saying, yeah, I, I need better things like, you know, like, for instance, we'll ask, you know, the the agency owners, why are you, you know, this is what you should do. And they'll defend all the reasons that they can't. Finance yeah. is a big one. Right. Mm-hmm. I can't afford to do that or whatever. And we always told them to change how they say that. It's not that you can't. It's how can you. Mm-hmm. Right. So um, what are some of the biggest um, the biggest problems that you overcome when people have a closet full of clothes and you're mm-hmm. like, hey, we got to get more. Um, honestly, Nick, I don't have those objections anymore. That's awesome. And the reason is, and I think it's because when you are truly living out your purpose and serving in a very deep way, Mm -hmm. and I'm serving the woman that I once was, right? I'm attracting that type of a woman. So when she reaches out to me, she's ready for that change. She's going through some type of a transition typically. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's from, you know, uh, maybe it's postpartum. Maybe she's getting um, a promotion at her job. Maybe she's moved to a different state. Whatever it is, she's going through some type of transition where she's ready to level up. Mm. So we vet, we, Got it. we vet our people before we even begin working with them because we are not for everybody. Right, that's it. Um, it really is about value, value, valuing yourself, investing in yourself. And not everyone has all the funds in the world to do these things. But, you know, for example, someone that's starting a company you have to invest in something, not the everything. Like you don't have to have the perfect website and all these things, but there are some fundamental things that you need, right, mm. to start a business. Same thing with your own personal self. You know, if you want to level that up, if you want to be the best version of you, if you feel that you want to have that worth in yourself, then you need to invest. Mm. And that does require funds. And so Absolutely. my role is to be strategic and prioritize. And so once we go into the wardrobe, determine what missing gaps there are, we're putting in the pieces that are the cake that align with the future, right? And also adding strategically the pieces where we can take a small amount of things and create a lot out of it. You know, the um, what you're saying is um, so true after when at 27 years old is when I had played my last baseball game. Right. So did it for, um, 23 years of my first 27 years of life only got paid for five of them. All right. Well, that's not true. I did get paid in college in the form of a scholarship, but still, so at 27 years old, um, I'm done with baseball and I got to figure out what happens next. It was uh, months went by and I hadn't made the move. And one day I looked in the mirror and realized I was still putting on the same clothes that I wore as a professional athlete. Like, so I was still like, and, and I had an aha moment. It was like, well, if I want people to look at me different, I got to change what they see. Yeah. So I had to change what I saw in the mirror. And, Mm -hmm. um, I gave one of the, when I first got in the insurance space, I got asked to do a, a little keynote. It was a pretty good size room and, uh, because of the baseball career. So I was talking about work ethic and stuff like that. And then afterwards, I went to the bar and I was getting a little drink. And there was two guys talking about what I had said, and they were and I was listening. I was eavesdropping, listening everything, listening to everything that they said. And um, and one of the guys looks at me and he says, "Did you hear what that guy said?" That, and I was like, "And I was the guy that said it." And right then, I looked out and I realized that everybody there had a bad fitting navy or black suit on, just like I did, <laughs> and I did not stand out. Right. Okay. So from that moment on, I made the decision that like I was like, all right, well, I got to change everything. I had never worn these before. I'd always mm-hmm. had really short hair. Um, and uh, and like at the time. So at the time I did. And you can tell me how ridiculous this is. But I started wearing I, I quit wearing all the bad fitting suits. I went and I started wearing mixed match suits. I didn't like wearing ties, but I started putting flowers and stuff on the lapel that people would remember. And I started wearing Tom's shoes with no socks only because people they gave a pair of 
of shoes to a kid when you bought one in need. So they had a good mission statement behind it. But everybody would always remember, that was the guy with no socks and the times on and the giant thing on his lapel. So immediately I was remembered in a crowd yeah. from doing that. People were making decisions, right? So everything that you're saying, like it, it totally 100% checks out. And that's not even considering how you feel. That's just how people feel about you based on what you present in your packaging, yes. right? Yes. What are some other stories? I love stories. Okay. So what are some other stories? I have a good one. Um, all right, bring it. Can I tell a story about me? Please. Because this always shocks people. Um, so the way that I live my life and what people see out there of me now is so not how I grew up. Like I, I literally grew up living off the land in a very small town and it was called Buckfield, Maine. And in this town, so my parents were big time hippies okay. and they wanted to like live off the land. So we had no running water. We had uh, a hand pump. Uh, so it, we had an outhouse. Uh, we had a wood burning stove. Wow. And so, and my job was to, uh, can I say it? This is kind of gross. Uh, about, let's just shock the people. Today. You can say whatever okay. you want. So I had to take out this pea potty in the morning and dump it in the outhouse. Like that is my life. And the reason why I'm telling you this um, is because most people would never know that of me. Agreed. And so when you break it all down, we're all the same. And, but I have always loved fashion and always loved beauty. I actually thought it was superficial when mm. I was younger because that's not how my family was. I would take my Salvation Army clothes, put them on and look in the mirror and make all these outfits and pretend I was anywhere but Buckfield, Maine. Mm -hmm. And I just, it was magical. I loved it. And I just, I'm, I wanted everyone to know that story about me because I think it holds people back from reaching out to us because they think that we're something that we're not and we're all we're all the same. We just want other women to be able to feel amazing and feel beautiful and feel confident Absolutely. and worthy to live their best life. The Hit Streak is powered by Team Hyder. Team Hyder has been serving you for 11 years and has racked up over 20 national and local awards for excellence in all areas. When it comes to finding the right health plan, we need to consider your family's needs and your family's budget. That's what we do to serve you. To look further and to book an appointment, visit teamhider.com. So executives um, and uh, high-performing female entrepreneurs. Well, let's, let's, let's describe the, yeah. to, to all those ladies out there that are hearing this today. They're probably sitting there thinking, well, I wonder if that's me. Yeah. I wonder if that's me. So how are they going to know if it's them? Where are, those, where are those ladies at in their life when it's time to give you the call? Um, well, first of all, she's that woman that always or may feel like she's a little bit different. So maybe she is not has not started her, this big business yet, but maybe she has an inkling and a, and a desire to do something more. Mm-hmm. She feels called to do something. And I think it's really important that she pays attention to it. So anyone who is watching or listening, any woman out there, um, pay attention to that whisper mm -hmm. or that tap on the shoulder. I got it. I got it at 40. And I paid attention and leaned in. And when you do that and start to uncover what it is you were designed to do, because it will come to you, whatever your faith is, it will come to you. Mm. And there is someone there that I believe is guiding, you know, guiding you along the way. But we get so caught up in this one way thinking in this day to day life. Lean into that. You deserve to do that. The one thing that I heard, and this is what allowed me to start my company and take action, because this really is about taking action, right? Mm -hmm. Taking the right steps to get to the next level. I was so scared to start my company and start my business because I was afraid to fail. And I mean, everybody's, you know, has, has those fears, right? And I heard Tony Robbins say, I was in the car. I was on my way to my retail job. At this point, I had gotten a raise to $12 an hour. Mm. And 
I used to drive with, uh, just a fun fact, my hairspray in the cup holder because at the stoplight, I'd shh with my hair. I'd spray my hair. Guilty. But anyway, yeah. Guilty. <laughs> anyway, I had to say that. I had to say that. And, um, and I'm at the stoplight and I'm listening to Tony Robbins, a podcast. And he was talking about how every person has a gift to give the world. But if you get stuck in the fear and you don't take action, it's very selfish. Mm. And, we think that was powerful we think that it's about us but it has nothing to do with us Mm, i grew up my dad was in the music business and um the late great charlie monk the mayor music row there was a a new artist in town um his name was perry and he was um on the road to getting his his record deal and charlie walked in one day he was sitting in dad's office and perry was always clean shaven and at the time he was experimenting with like a a goatee and charlie walked in he goes hey 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 and he looked at perry he goes what's that and and perry goes oh you know just trying something new he goes you can't do that you're a celebrity now you gotta be a celebrity all the time and it was like how disheartening is it when you see the celebrity that has the appearance that you see all the time and then you meet him in person maybe like when they're at the grocery store or something like that and you see him in their sweatpants Mm -hmm. and how um how let down you are when that happens. We see Dolly Parton all the time. She eats at the Mexican restaurant next door on the regular. Like that's her favorite spot. She's always dressed as Dolly. Always. Never yeah. does she go out in public not dressed as Dolly. Yeah. And uh, I had an insurance agent one time that um, I had a story where I was sitting in line at the grocery store and somebody's card got declined at the register in front of me. And literally this is, you couldn't draw this up any better. The The husband was like, health insurance came out today. And and um, and they were like, all right, cool. So they were gonna put items back. So I said, no, 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 I'll take care of those. And I was like, and by the way, this is my card. I can probably help you with that insurance thing. Let, you know, I'll call you tomorrow. And I ended up helping that family uh, save them some money and whatnot. And it worked out great. And I told that story. And dude, a few months went by and another insurance agent, almost like a same thing happened. He was like, dude, you won't believe it. I was at the store and that same thing happened. I was like, did you get the deal? He goes, no. I was like, why not? He goes, I was in my sweatpants. Interesting. They wouldn't take me seriously when I tried to talk to them. They didn't want to do business. I looked worse than they did when their card was getting declined. Interesting. You know, I, but I think a big part of it too, obviously it's the perception of others. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is a piece of it, but it's also a a big thing is the perception of ourselves. Yes. And if we don't take that time and do that kind thing for ourselves and put effort into how we look, then how are we supposed to feel good about ourselves and feel confident and have the ability to get up, suit up and show up? The way you do anything is the way you do everything, right? And if you won't even give, put yourself as a priority, can you really put it like you can't save others on the airplane if you don't put the oxygen mask on yourself first? Right. You know what I mean? So like exactly. there, there comes a certain amount of uh, how can you expect people to like you if you don't like you? Mm-hmm. Exactly. You know what I mean? So I, I believe in everything you're saying 100 percent as a as a as a fella. I, I get picked on a little bit about that kind of stuff, but it is crazy important. It, it is, is crazy important. And um, the for about five minutes before I came up to meet you ladies, I was in the bathroom fixing some things up because I was about to go make a first impression. <laughs> well, I your sure hair was. looks so perfect. <laughs> That's on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> That's on purpose. I but love people it. remember that. People, when the first time I grew my hair out, it was trending on Twitter for a minute. That's a fact too. But um, um, Jessica, I just, I love everything that you're doing. It's all about um, m- making people feel better and people that do great things that help other people, they feel a certain way about themselves. They, they factually do. That's abs- absolutely. I got to know though, CSJ. Yeah. So fi- it, you found it almost five years, by the way, just keeping the business open for five years is incredible. Right. And that's even if you're not making money and, uh, but like, so what's the future for CSJ? Like how, how big is it going to get? How many markets do you want to get into? How big do you dream? There are no limits. So what we have, what we have right now, um, I have a studio uh, in my home, actually, of mm. um, I had always envisioned having this beautiful curated studio that had all these beautiful things that I had put in it so that I would have those things for my clients, right? And as a fashion stylist, I don't know any other fashion stylist that does it 
quite the way I do. And, and literally I have never, I mean, I've followed people here and there, but I don't even totally know what they're doing. I just, I envisioned what I wanted it to be. And it's now that, but now I'm, I know it's big, it's big, it's bigger than me. Like it's bigger than what I imagined. Mm -hmm. And so now I did a lot of market research with the clients that we have because some people that have worked with me, and this is from way back when I worked in a store and I would go to her home. I mean, I have some people that I've worked with for 12 years, 13 years. Wow. And I ask the question, why do you stay with me? What is it? And there's a bunch of different answers, but one of the coolest answers that I heard recently was, she said, you know, yes, I don't have to go shopping anymore. You, the confusion is gone. I feel more confident. She said, but I don't know, this word just keeps coming into my mind, community. Mm. And I said, what do you mean by that? I want you to see something. They, if you're watching with us, literally, I've got it written right here. Where is it? Community is what I wrote down because I'm like, that's a big thing with your app, too, that you guys have. There it is, yes. right, right there at the very bottom, community. Yes, yep. and so... When I when she said that, she said, you've introduced me to so many other amazing women because we take a very holistic approach. It's not just about clothes. We're going from the outside in. And there's so many other experts out there that can can help these women, but also we can be helping one another. Right. When you're that woman that continuously is reinventing yourself, that is always wanting to level it up, that is of service mind, that wants to help other women, we decided we need to take this a whole level further and create an app, which will not only have the digital course that I was telling you about, but will also have a community of women, of like-minded women that can be there to support one another, a very safe place for them to be, but also where we can bring in guest expert speakers, have webinars, have um, and really get a group of women all together. And when you have those types of like-minded women, this is where true innovation happens. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. Well, it's um, it's it's quite the story. And just I want to make sure that this. I don't know if we covered this in the beginning. I can't remember. Um, but you guys are you're not limited to just the, the Sarasota area, correct? No, only. Um, I would say about half of our clients are still in uh, Sarasota. And that's simply because before we even, you know, launched the actual company, I had been working with these women uh, on the side. So it's been many years. But about half of our clients are not even in Sarasota. They're all over the United States, a little bit into Canada uh, even. Um, a lot of people are finding us on social media. They're yeah. Googling. They're, you know, and they've never seen a concept like what we do. Right. And so those that really want to level things up and really want to live their life in a very true, authentic way, they're reaching out to us. Mm. They know there's something better for themselves. So I would encourage any woman that's out there that like has that feeling of I want something more and maybe feels like I don't know if I'm worthy, take the action because life is all about action steps mm -hmm. you're never going to feel ready Man. don't wait till you lose 10 more pounds because that's not what it is women actually women that are trying to lose weight actually fun fact um they usually lose about five to ten pounds in the first month that they start working with me and they don't change anything the only thing that changes is their confidence goes up boom that's right that's right um well like as we as we get close to the uh, to the end here, is there yeah. anything else um, that you wanted to speak into um, or or talk to the folks about that um, that maybe I didn't I didn't bring out today because this was a really important episode for me because it is yeah. it's such a it's such a unique but um, but powerful and needed business man because like I, I, you know I, I get I guess when people are spending eight to ten hours a day looking at this sucker. Yeah. What, what we figured out is what they believe is what they know and what they know is what they've seen the most. Yeah. Right. You know, so and they're looking at themselves in the mirror all the time. You know yeah. what I mean? All the time. So they see themselves. So is there anything else um, that, that you'd like to, to speak to today in our time together? Um, not that I can specifically think of other than I would love to give an, a free offer. Let's go. Would you, would you like that? Okay. Let me just say you're welcome. <laughs> okay. okay. There's actually, uh, there's two. Actually, right. no, there's three. I'm sorry. There's three. There's three big ones. Okay. So number one, 
Uh, we offer at CSJ a free styling call. Okay. And that's a 45 minute call with me. And how to, do they get one of those? Um, we're we're going to link it somewhere, I know, because we, yeah. have, we have a um, a link where people can go directly Perfect. to that and sign up and they can book their own call for a time that works for them. Awesome. It'll be in the show notes. That's fantastic. Yeah. So anyone who's like not quite sure mm -hmm. uh, where they fit into all this, because we have, well, now when we have this app launch and this membership program launch, we can meet women where they are in their journey, mm. in their fashion journey, wherever that may be. Um, you know, not everyone can work one on one with us right away. And we understand that. Um, and I really, truly want to help all women when I when I can and, you know, put a help put a plan together for that woman. So if the timing isn't right. Right. Then we can talk about that as well. We also have um, on our website and we'll have a link to this as well, a free wardrobe edit blueprint. Okay, mm. this is like, I am like giving it away. This is like 25 years of experience that we formulated how to actually take the confusion out of editing your wardrobe and setting it up for success. Come on. So some actionable steps that you can take right now in your current closet. That's right. Um, and we also have our, uh, we still have our winter lookbook. That's okay. out there. So with all the latest fashions and what to incorporate in with your existing wardrobe. So a lot of fun stuff. Did you come up with the word lookbook? Because that is brilliant. Did you did you make that up? I've never heard that before. I think so. I've heard of a cookbook before, no, but it, never a lookbook. Lookbook, it's one word. Okay. It's one word. Uh, people keep typing it in on, on social media as two words, and then they're not actually getting the lookbook. <laughs> <laughs> got it got it we've made it one word it's its own word we made it i love it, it. no it's yes. it's brilliant it's absolutely brilliant and tell me again about the call the um what's the the call called again um it's a free styling call free styling call yeah. so, so they could also dm you on instagram yeah style call right they could dm that to you absolutely. and that would help that well. perfect and then all this stuff will be in the show notes um but um that's fantastic man well like again Congrat like congratulations Thank on you. all your success on all the people that you've helped. I feel like she's just getting started though, even oh, though yeah, you've been no, killing this, it. This is just getting started. Like I said, it's bigger. It's it's bigger than me. I really feel called to something, um, something bigger that I'm just gonna lean in and see where it goes. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, and um, and like you know, there, there's some uh, there's some there's some fellas out there like me. <laughs> that have learned that like one um when the the more the more attentive i am to myself like you know i want my wife to like what she sees that's yeah. really important you know what i mean it's i don't want that to be like i don't want her to just get the crumbs the leftovers of everything else you know i want i want them to get the best of everything and i know my son you know i love it when my son he he's he wears a lot of the, we share shoes now we're the same size and a lot of things we share shoes and and he has his own sets of ray-ban glasses and whatnot and and he likes what dad wears so and i love it when i walk in and he says oh dad that's a cool outfit like it just makes you feel good man yeah it just makes you feel good yeah, so absolutely um but it's more than just the surface i want i don't want to make sure that we're not uh putting everything on the surface but it's the surface is at the end of the day does affect everything on the inside it does. It's not superficial at all. And what can I say one more? Yeah. Thing? Well, why do you think people made it superficial? <laughs> like, how did it become superficial? I don't know. I don't know where that came from, but it's not. You know, like I said, it's either the outside in, inside out. It's all fluid. It's all, it all matters. It's right? the, you know, it's the people. Only people that don't have money hate on money. <laughs> Money's only the villain to people that don't have it. So yeah. people that probably say that this stuff's superficial, um, you know, they don't have enough pride in themselves to take any, I guess. I, you know, yeah. that's the only thing I know. I'm yeah. not sure. Or they don't have enough confidence. They're trying to find their confidence. Yes. And can I say something to your men? Come on. Okay. So for all your all the guys out there that are like yourself, Nick, and that want, that put their wife on a pedestal and they want their wife to feel like the best version of herself. Mm -hmm. We actually have a lot of men and it's usually during the holidays or um, we have, um, I don't know when this is airing, but we do have um, Valentine's Day uh, coming up and men reach out to us and mm -hmm. want to do this service for their wives. And let me tell you, when a guy gives this service to her, to the wife, mm -hmm. you should see like, 
how it affects them. I mean, it's so much more. No doubt. So much more than, you know, their confidence being elevated. Like they feel cared for and loved in a very, in a deeper way. What's a, so what's a, a, um, so if a, so if a guy wants to do that for his wife. Yes. You know, so how does he connect you with his wife? What's the, what's the best way to do that? Cause I'm telling you, the guys are going to find an excuse right now. Well, I didn't know how to do it. Um, I actually, I want him to have the freestyling call. Okay. Because we talk about we talk about his wife and I want to know everything about her. And then depending on her personality or how he feels she would take it, we make a decision as to how to approach it. Because sometimes it can be that they it feels overwhelming to them. So mm. we we kind of, you know, ease in and maybe we'll do a phone call first with with her or right. you know we don't want to just roll everything into her house or send her a package right away sometimes it it takes a little bit of um we have to get to know her mm. the hit streak is powered by rack financial when it comes to your credit card merchant processing rack financial is efficient reliable and trusted at the end of the day when it comes to processing your credit card payments they make it simple the way it's supposed to be Check out Rack Financial. I've, I am extremely enlightened, and this has been um, too much fun. I hate that uh, we've been rocking and rolling. We've been going for a minute here, like you know, yeah. what I mean? we've been rocking and rolling. So I could sit here and talk about this stuff all day because I know I've learned a ton. But um, congr- again, congratulations on all your success. Congratulations on everything you've done and and, and everywhere that you're going. And anytime you're in town, let yes. us know. I'd love to bring you back. We'd love um, that. I'd love to bring you back and find out what's going on and whatnot. And um, I need to introduce you to my bride. Her name is Rhiannon. I'm, I need to I do that. I would love to meet Rhiannon. Absolutely. Yeah. And I've got an up and coming for you and my daughter. She'll be, re- we'll be getting her <laughs> booked out soon enough, right? So, um, well, Jessica, it's been an absolute pl- uh, pleasure having you on the show today. And I can't thank you enough for your time. Oh, I'm so honored. Thank you so much, Nick, for having me. Absolutely. Well, folks, check it out. We were hanging out with Jessica Papineau, the founder founder of CSJ, a leading authentic fashion styling company for high performance or high performing female entrepreneurs. Um, you can check her out on csjstyling.com and on Instagram at the Jessica Papano. Folks, thanks so much for tuning in to another episode of The Hit Streak. I am your man, Nick Hyder. God bless.